Hey, Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. i got a whole lot of different things to talk about today, but it all relates to some brackets that I build to hold this rod rack. And I needed brackets because it's pretty heavy. Each one of these will hold close to 10 pounds of steel rod anyway. And uh, so I don't want it falling down. So I had to build some very simple brackets to hold this rod rack on the wall out of cold rolled steel. Instead of using a brake and breaking the 90 degree bends in here, I just decided to make cuts, make outside corner joints. That gives me a chance to talk about speed tacking, how well that works for if you're building some parts like this. It gives me a chance to talk about using aluminum blocks for for chill bars, for chill blocks to pull the heat out of, to, to prevent distortion and also prevent discoloration if it was stainless steel. How to make a little handheld tool out of an old screwdriver and some silicon bronze for holding holding apart with one hand while you tack with the other with no filler metal. Very handy little tool. I've shown it before, but I went ahead and went, went ahead and made one today because I couldn't find my, my old one. And some pulse settings for welding without filler, also called autogenous welding. Let's talk about it as we go. Let's get right into it. Now in case you missed the, the video where I built these tubes, it's pretty simple. Inch and a half PVC. The couplings that I used and the short pieces on the end with the end cap are kind of an unnecessary step. You could just use end caps, uh, no problem. I just want to be able to grab rods a lot easier, so I want about you know four to six inches sticking out the end. And the little clips that I made here are out of two inch PVC, and I just cut about an inch and a half out of them with a bandsaw so that provides enough pressure that they stay there, and then they're kind of cradled in some extra pipe caps that I bought and that's where the bracket went on the bottom and of course they run in with a nice long screw into the stud behind the pegboard. Now we're going to build these brackets today and that's what we're going to talk about all the stuff that goes goes with that. Chill blocks, pulse settings, handy tool for hold down, getting speed tacks, etc. This is a little strong hand tools fixture point table and this little clamp right here I keep on the corner is really handy for stuff like this. This is a light duty uh, welding table, light duty fixtures, you know, just really simple, but very handy. And this is the first chance I've had to use these little pliers here, but they, they will really get some clamping power when you crank down on that forged handle like that. So I'm, I'm going to drill a few holes in here. It'd be a lot easier to drill them before the fact than try to drill them after the things are welded up. So I just figured a good chance to try out the pliers. And I'm going to build a little simple fixturing station here just really crude I save every block of aluminum I can get like this these are just mismachined parts from a machine shop and uh, aluminum acts as a really good heat sink and so I'm just building a little quick heat sink fixturing station I'll get things tacked up here and then I'll weld them against that heavy block to pull heat out now the speed tacking I mentioned earlier is basically just setting the machine to a little bit hotter than what you would weld at in this case you would one amp per one thousandths on uh, 80 thousandths, two millimeter thick steel, uh, 80 amps. Well, I'm setting it to 105 amps, and I'm using a little torch switch. I'm just going to get a, a blast. And you'll notice I'm not letting off the blast. I'm just trying out a different machine that had a spot timer on it. And I set the spot timer to half a second. So when I press the trigger, I get an arc for half a second, and that's it. I get the same same time every time. Now that's totally not necessary. You can just bump bump the trigger and let off really quick. Works pretty much just as well. But if a machine has a spot timer on it, you know, it gets a lot of repeatability. You can see how clean these tacks are and how quick they are. You do have to have a good fit up with no gap. You get a gap, you're going to have problems. And I will show that in just a little while. I had a little gap and uh, missed the tack. And we'll talk about how to deal with that in just a minute. That's the reason for that handy little tool. But you see the back side of that, basically zero discoloration on the front or the back. And that's all I need here is just a couple of tacks on each piece. And it makes putting together some brackets like this really quick. In fact, it's quicker than it, it would be using a, a sheet metal brake to get these, to get these uh, bins in here. Maybe not better, but definitely quicker. And just for the, for the purpose here, for building some simple brackets, just fine. You kind of always want your tack welds to be a little bit smaller than your final weld so you can't tell where there was a tack. Just a, just, just a side note there. This is where I missed. 
had a little gap in there. Things are getting a little bit more complicated now with the welding and everything. So I need something to hold that down. And I'm going to use a copper spoon here that I got from Harbor Freight. Now, it's not always you can buy something from Harbor Freight for $10 and ever, never have any regrets. But this is one of those times. This is a really, really handy tool. I've shown it before a few times. I'll show you in a minute how to make something that's not quite the same thing, but for what I'm using it here for, it, it works just as well. So I got a couple of tacks on that one now. Let's speed the film up here and just kind of show you how quickly this can, can let you put some stuff together. Using the torch switch, it just blasts the amperage. You don't have to wait for the foot pedal to go stroke up and down. And you get no, no discoloration. Very easy to weld over those tacks. Do one last one here just to give you another look at that. You might notice I'm propping the cup, touching the metal, then rocking it back just a little bit and then blasting it with amperage. Now let's make one of those little tools. I've got a really, really cheap screwdriver here. And you know, you can you could get screwdrivers for a dollar these days and a lot of them are really soft metal and kind of junk and I'm wrapping that braided copper around there as a heat sink so I don't melt the plastic handle. And I'm going to put a little blob of silicon bronze on the tip of this thing. And I'm going to have to let it cool. Even with that copper wire on there, it would get too hot. So I'll put a little bit, let it cool, let it cool off for a minute or so, and then I'll add another another blob or two. And that's what this, this is what that looks like here. I'm just mounding some silicon bronze on there. I'm using 1 16th diameter. It doesn't really matter what it looks like at this stage because I'm going to sand it off so that I get a nice flat tip with a little bit of an angle on it. It looks something like that. Now this is really handy, especially for really thin lap joints on stainless steel. This is not too terribly thin. This is 16 gauge, roughly a 16th of an inch thick, 1.6 millimeters thick. But you can hold it right next to where you're going to tack because it is a copper alloy. And so it pulls heat away really quickly and lets you hold it down, get to where you have no gap at all, which is really important on thin lap joints. You can hold it right next to where you're going to, where you're going to weld and then you just give it a little blast and get nice, nice clean tacks. Works just as well on an outside corner joint like this. Once again, I prop the cup. I've got the electrode extended a little bit further than I need to, but I prop it, touch, back off a little bit, and hit the trigger. That's really all it takes. And this is this is two millimeter, eighty thousand steel, one hundred and five amps, worked like a top. All right, so it's time to do some welding now. Now, I'm just for just for those that don't have pulse on your machine, I'm just showing this. This is just no pulse, no filler. I'm using the foot pedal and using just enough amperage to where the puddle barely wraps the corners. And that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. It works really good. But I am going to use pulse settings at 105 amps. 20% pulse on time, 15% background current, one and a half pulses a second. Now I like to use either one to one and a half or even as low as 0.7 if I'm using filler metal. I either want to go slow pulsing like that or up up in the 33 and above range where it doesn't bother my eyes, but in that in that 10 pulses a second range really is bothersome for me and I don't like to do it. So this is a, about a one and a half pulses a second. And basically in between pulses, I try to move the electrode right on up to the leading edge of the puddle, same distance each time. And it really limits the penetration and heat input on some thin sheet metal like that. And you can see using this, I'm using this Furic number 12 cup along with the chill blocks and the pulse and it's pretty much you know a discoloration free weld with all that going on that the the aluminum probably makes as much difference as anything again if I was using filler rod this is one pulse a second here if I was using filler rod sometimes 0.7 pulses a second gives you just enough time to get that filler rod in there without having to really rush it now I am using this Furic number 12 cup here and I don't need to be using that on this particular job but a job like this it does really come in handy where, where you've got stuff in the way you can see how I've got the electrode extended really really far actually this is Roy Crumrine doing the welding here so he's got the electrode extended really really far 
but there are times when you really need to extend the electrode and maintain really, really good gas coverage and shielding. And you can see that barb fitting is just kind of in the way, but you know, there's oftentimes stuff in the way, and when you need to get good shielding and a long stick out, a cup like a Furic number 12 is the bomb. Again, totally don't need it for doing this job right here. It just makes filming a little bit easier. All right, just for kicks, I'm, I'm welding one without pulse and with filler metal here. One of these outside corner joints. All right. All right, I'm going to do a test weld now in the same metal, some scrap pieces I had left over, using one and a half pulses a second with those same settings. Makes for a nice looking weld, almost discoloration free, almost penetration free too on the back side. And it right down the middle and do a little polish and etch just to just to highlight the fact that you don't always get what you think you get on a little fillet weld outside corner joint like this sometimes you don't have that much metal holding the thing together in this case I'll outline the weld here and you can see it's not even quite half the thickness of the metal now for this little bracket that is not a problem these brackets will be just fine but on a part that is going to experience vibration or thermal cycling that would probably crack after a while. Okay, well let's go over the rod rack a little bit now. I won't go over in detail, but just some dimensions here and there. There's a picture of the of the brackets and how it's hooked on to, to the pegboard, long screws running into the studs. I put these on around four and a half, four and a half to five inch centers, and I had extra pipe caps that I bought, and they're pretty cheap, so I just used those to kind of hold the bottom. I cut out around an inch and a half to an inch and five eighths of two inch PVC to make these little kind of spring clips and they work pretty good. They hold the parts really nicely and easy to get in and out. What more could you ask for? All right, commercial time here. I saved it to the end, but I put together some of these little bundles here and you can get a TIG Finger and a TIG Finger XL along with a gas lens kit, several different varieties for several different torches and situations. Or if you'd like to learn more about the Furic number 12 Pyrex cup, just go to weldmonger.com. As always, I appreciate your time. I know there's a lot of choices out there on YouTube and I appreciate you spending some time on my channel.